Hey boys and girls, it's Mrs. Walker. Today we're going to talk about using the distributive property again, and we are going to break apart arrays to be able to help us solve some division problems. So our learning goal for today says, I can use the distributive property to decompose units. Remember, decompose just means to break apart, and units are one of our factors in our problem. So we're just breaking apart one of the factors into something that's smaller to make it easier for us to solve. Okay? So let's jump in and get started. The first problem that we're going to work on says Henrietta works in a shoe store. She uses shoelaces to lace each pair, I'm sorry, she uses two shoelaces to lace each pair of shoes. She has a total of 24 laces. How many pairs of shoes can Henrietta lace? So when I look to solve this problem, if you guys can see on the screen here, I have two laces. That's my group for each one. And then what I'm going to use now is I'm going to use a tape diagram to help me solve this problem. We know that there's a total of 24 laces, so we have to be able to count how many groups of two can Henrietta use to make and use all of those 24 laces. So go ahead and pause the video and try and solve this problem on your own. Once you've solved it, go ahead and click play and I'll share how I use a tape diagram to solve this problem. All right, friends. So let's see what I did. So remember we're talking um, with this problem, I wanna be able to kind of write over and over and break apart my tape diagram into those laces, into two groups, um, two laces in each group. So I've labeled my tape diagram as one unit is two laces. The total is 24 laces, and I'm trying to figure out the number of pairs of shoes that she has. So I'm thinking I'm going to use like a multiplication to be able to solve this. So I have blank times two equals 24 because 24 is my total. Two is how many are in each group. But now I need to find out that question mark is the number of groups that I'm going to be able to use. So I'm going to skip count as I break apart this tape diagram. Let's see if I can grab the right thing here. Here we go. So two, four, six, oops, eight. Whoa, hang on. No. <laughs> Oh goodness, hang on friends, let me lock that down. Lock. Okay, so we're at eight. Here we go. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. 22. Oh, and look, I made my tape diagram a little bit too small, and that's okay. So 24. Let me double check. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Okay, so now I need to find out how many groups that I had. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So my missing piece of information is those 12 Groups. So I can write that as a multiplication of 12 times 2. So 12 groups of 2 equals 24. And Henrietta can lace 12 pairs of shoes. Okay, so let's jump in and look at another problem. We're going to modeling, we're going to be modeling how we can break apart and distribute. Remember, that's that distributive property using an array as a strategy for division. Okay, so Let's take a look at this array. So if I look at this array that I have, there are two in each row, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, um, what you are more than welcome to do is draw this array on your dry erase board so you can kind of go along and manipulate it with me. Um, so if you wanna pause the video and draw that, a 12 by two array, you can. Um, if you just wanna check out what I have on the screen, that's fine too. Okay, so what I want to do first is look at my problem up here is 24 divided by 2 equals a blank. Okay, so um, we're going to use this array to help us solve 24 divided by 2. There's 24 dots total on this array. Okay, what I want to do is I want to take this line now and I want to draw it after the 10th 
row, okay? So this shows one way to break apart to this array. This is not the only way you can break apart this array, uh, this array, but I chose to do it after 10 because 10 is an easier number for me to be able to work with. I like those nice friendly numbers, okay? So this is after one row, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that. Oh, hang on friends. I'm gonna leave that right here. Okay, so I broke apart my array now. Um, and remember that when we are going to write our division equation that matches this, you always wanna start with the biggest number. Okay, that's the total of your array goes first when you're dividing. So let's come up with, on your whiteboard, I want you to come up with the division equation that matches this top part, and then the division equation that um, represents the bottom part. So remember, you start with the total. So what's the total of this top? And what did we divide it by? How many rows did we divide this array into? Okay, write your first division equation and then write the second one down here. Okay, and click play when you're ready to share. Okay friends, so here's what I came up with. The top part is 20 divided by two because there's a total of 20 dots in this top part of my array and there are two in each group. Okay, and then I know that there are 10 rows, so that's how I get the 10. The bottom part, there are four total, so that's where the four comes from. There are two in each row, and there are two total groups down there on the bottom, so that's where that comes from. So in this top part up here, how many twos are above this part of the line? So in this top section, how many twos are in this array? Yeah, 10 twos, because there's 10 rows. Now, how many are down here below the line? How many twos are below the line? Yeah, two twos. One, two. Good job, friends. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this as an addition of two quotients. What? Crazy talk, Mrs. Walker. So all that is, friends, remember, is you're just a quotient is just an answer of a multiplication problem, okay, or a division problem. So we're going to be taking two division problems, finding the answer, and adding those together to be able to find our, um, our answer, okay? So let me bring this over for you, okay? I would like for you to copy this onto your dry erase board and I want you to try and figure out what goes in the blank. Notice, let me grab my magic pen. Notice how there's one part and then a second part. Hint, there you go, there's two parts of our array, okay? So notice how you can already steal what you've already done and fill in this blank part and then for this part, you're solving and then writing it here. And then this part, you're solving and then writing it underneath. Okay, and then solve this problem and write it here. So click pause and fill in the information on um, my blank um, equations for you and then solve. Okay, and click play when you're ready to go over it together. Okay, friends. So now let's talk about this. So I'm going to steal right from here. 20 divided by 2. So there's my 20 divided by 2. And my other array that I have is 4 divided by 2. So I'm going to squeeze that in there. And I know that my whole array has 24 dots in it. So that's really 24 divided by 2. So if I were to add 20 divided by 2 plus 4 divided by 2, that's going to give me 24 divided by 2. Notice here, friends, how I have a 20 and a 4. That's how I broke apart 24, okay? All right, so 20 divided by two, I know that I'm just gonna split this array kind of like right down the middle almost. I could look at it that way, right? And there are 10 rows in there, so that means I'm going to have 20 divided by two gives me 10. Then if I have my four and I split it right down that middle again, it's going to give me two. So 10 plus two gives me 12. So 24, right here, divided by 2 equals 12, okay? So we just added the quotients of two smaller facts to find the quotient, quotient of a larger one. So we're using that break apart and divide strategy, also known as the distributive property, to be able to break apart a larger factor 
into smaller ones to be able to make our division easier for us to be able to solve, okay? So good job with that one, friends. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, so we're gonna use the break apart and distribute or distributive property to solve this division problem as well. So now we have a 27 divided by three. When we are, um, when we're dividing, what are we focused on? Um, are we focused on breaking up the number of groups or rows, like in multiplication, or are we focused on breaking up the total? What do you think about when we're dividing? Are we breaking up the groups and the rows, or are we breaking up the total? Yeah, we're breaking up the total, okay? The total is the largest number, and that's what you're always going to be breaking apart when you're dividing. You're taking something that has a lot, and you're dividing it or splitting it into smaller groups, okay? So let's break apart 27 into 15 and another number. 15 plus what equals 27? Oh. We have to think about that a little bit, right? You could also break out your regular old subtraction if you need to. You could do 27 minus 15, right? I know that 7 minus 5 is 2, and 1 minus, or 2 minus 1 gives me 12, okay? So I can break that apart into 15 and 12. So here I have my array that is 9 times 3, okay? 9 times 3. Um, because that's going to give me 27. And I know that one of my factors is a 3. So I needed something to go along with that 3 that's going to give me 27. So I could really go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way until I get to the very bottom, which has 27. That's how I knew I wanted to draw an array of 9. Okay? So what I want to do is I want to draw a box around the part of the array that shows a total of 15. So I want you to count through. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So really, I want to draw a box that goes around here. Let me shift this over a little bit so we can see. Okay, so that's my total of 15. So we're going to box the first five rows, really, for that. Let me make this a little bit bigger for us to see. Okay, see how it sticks out a little bit? So hopefully that stands out a little bit more for you. Okay. Now I want you to write a division equation that matches that boxed portion of the array. Okay, a division equation. Remember, a division starts with that total. So what's the total number in this box? Okay, what did we divide it by already? Okay, and solve for that. So go ahead and click pause, write that down on your dry erase board, and then click play when you're ready to go over it. Okay, friends, here's what I came up with. I came up with 15, because that was my total. We divided it into three in each group, and that gave me one, two, three, four, five groups. So that's where I got my 15 divided by three equals five. Okay, so now I want you to draw a box around the part of the array that shows a total of 12. So I did my 15. What's left that shows a, um, a total of 12? Draw a box around that one as well. All right, what I wanna do for mine, friends, is I wanna change my color really quick of my box. So you'll see it change there. Sorry about that. Okay. Here we go. So there's my box that goes around a total of 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I could also count by threes. 3, 6, 9, 12. That would be the fastest way to be able to skip count that way. Okay, so now what I want you to do on your screen is I want you to draw or write a division equation for the bottom part of the array of what I have bo boxed up in red for that total of 12. Remember, division equation, you're starting with the total, dividing by the number or by how many are in each group to find the total of number of groups. Okay, so click pause, write that division equation, and then click play when you're ready to share. Okay, friends, here's what I came up with. Ta-da! 
12 divided by 3, because there's 12 total, there's 3 in each group, divided by 3 equals 4, because there are 4 equal rows. Okay, so for me, it really helped me to be able to break apart that 27 into something that's more manageable for me to be able to solve. So I chose that 15 and that 12 to make it a little bit easier. So now what I want you to do is I want you to write this onto your dry erase board and I want you to be able to complete the following sequence to solve 27 divided by 3. Okay, so notice, let me grab my little magic pen here, 15 divided by 3, 15 divided by 3. 12 divided by 3, 12 divided by 3, and my 27 divided by 3 is my overall problem. So that goes along with my total array. I just broke it apart into something that's smaller for me to be able to solve of 15 and 12. I also chose 15 and 12 because then I knew um, I could do faster and easier with those fives. I liked the factor of the five in there, but that's okay. Any way you choose to be able to divide it, you absolutely can. Okay, so I want you to be able to solve this. I want you to add the two quotients. So here's your first one and your second one to be able to find the total quotient of a larger problem. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Smaller quotients of smaller facts to be able to find the larger quotient. Okay, click play when you're ready to share. Okay, friends, here's what I came up with. 15 divided by 3 gives me 5. And 12 divided by 3 is going to give me 4. So I know that 5 plus 4, whoops, I still have my magic pen on, hang on. So I know that 5 plus 4 is going to give me a total of 9. So really, this is like saying 27 divided by 3 equals 9. They're really just bringing this equation down in every part of our problem. Okay, so 27 divided by 3 equals 9. I was able to do that again, remember, by the, finding the quotient of two smaller facts and adding those together to be able to find the larger quotient. Okay, so nice job today, friends. You guys did a great job with this. Please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for independent practice today. If you have any questions or need any help, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'd be happy to help. And I hope you guys have a wonderful, awesome rest of your day. I'll see you guys soon. Bye, friends. Bye.